44 North is a line of latitude. We're actually standing here right now at 44.23. And we just thought it gave relevance to our location in Deer Isle and then also on our bags that we put our coffee inside, we have the latitude of the grower's location. So for example, Bolivia 16 South. It kind of just shows like the travel that coffee makes. 44 North is a women-owned, 13-year-in-business coffee roasting company in Deer Isle, Maine, and I'm really honored to be one of the co-owners of this company. One of the unique experiences is to have a cafe is where you really create a space where people come together. So we, in an average day, have teachers, nurses, fishermen, tourists, second home owners, all in the same space buying coffee. So we had a baby roaster. It only roasted six pounds at a time. And within a year, we quickly realized that we were gonna you know, grow right out of this thing. So the, the evolution was like starting small and then knowing that if we could grow our wholesale business, our internet business, uh, our local presence with the two cafes, that we could then go to these, these current roasters that we have, which are 22 pounds uh, a roast. Bit by bit, it's been slow growth over 13 years, but we now have 12 employees and open year round, and we're just very grateful. I'm getting such like a Reese's peanut butter cup that I love. Oh yeah, I definitely get that cherry too. And this is a way that we evaluate and figure out how best to roast coffee. So these are samples taken at different temperatures throughout the roast. We smell them, taste them, kind of not judge them, but just evaluate them. Alex is roasting. She's pulling samples every like two degrees, four degrees. So it gives a spectrum of what we're gonna taste and then we can dial in what we like and then go from there. There's an art to roasting, just like there is to cooking, which I love to do, but there's also a science to it and kind of knowing how the exothermic process works, how the heat cooks the bean from the inside out, how it changes the cells, and, and flavor development. That's what we're trying to do, is get the optimal flavor out of the beans. Each coffee changes seasonally, so we have to do this every time which is a real treat because it definitely, just with any kind of agricultural product, it fluctuates season to season about what, like, what are the highlights, how we want to roast it, um, and how we want to advertise it. We source organic beans through Cooperative Coffees. It's an organization that has over 20 members of roasters in North America, and then we source through other cooperative growing organizations throughout the world. In the beginning, for us, when we were you know, just roasting, say, 5,000 pounds a year, it was actually like having friends go down and help us pick up the coffee in Rhode Island, because we, we actually piggyback off of another member of Cooperative Coffee for, for the first three years. So our, our beans would come into this uh, cafe called Coffee Exchange. Someone would go down and pick them up, put them in their car, usually Megan or myself, and then we bring them back here to the old high school building where we started and we'd have to have people help us carry them up the steps. So the community began like right there. The reason why Megan and I have stayed in this so long is because we have access to talk to these global communities and to actually be on a board call where someone's saying that the product was affected by leaf rust, a bacteria, last year and they lost 60% of it. So the fact that we can listen to their, their problematic issue and then also figure out a way to potentially uh, help farmers, like maybe match them with other uh, farmers from a different country who have already figured out the leaf rust, and that's what keeps us in 44 North Coffee. That and the fact that we get to work with amazing people.